Good day, and welcome to MAPI 8 Virtual Class. Today, we are going to talk about physical education. Let's start! Good day, and welcome to our Week 3 MAPI 8. In this day lesson, we are going to discuss, in physical education, the health-related fitness, different exercises program, and the nature and background of volleyball sports. So let us begin. Physical fitness is defined as a condition in which an individual has enough energy to avoid fatigue and enjoy life. Physical fitness also is a state of physiological well-being that is achieved through a combination of good diet, regular physical exercise, and other practices that promote good health. Now, there are two types of physical fitness. The first one is health-related fitness, and the second one is the skills-related fitness. The health-related fitness is the ability to become and stay physically healthy. It involves exercise, activities that you do in order to try to improve your physical health and stay healthy. There are five components of health-related fitness. The first one is flexibility. Second one is muscular strength. Third, muscular endurance. Fourth, cardiovascular strength, and five, body composition. We have prepared a short video for each component on the next succeeding slides. Let us begin with flexibility. This is the ability of muscle to bend into full range of motion without having injury. The test use here is the zipper test. Let's watch. Zipper test. For the performer, stand erect. Raise your right arm, bend your elbow, and reach down across your back as far as possible to test the right shoulder. Extend your left arm down and behind your back, bend your elbow up across your back, and try to reach or cross your fingers over those of your right hand as if to pull a zipper or scratch between the shoulder blades. To test the left shoulder, repeat the same procedure with the left hand over the left shoulder. For the partner, observe whether the fingers touched or overlap each other. If not, measure the gap between the middle fingers of both hands. Record the distance in centimeter. Scoring. Record the gap overlap to the nearest point one centimeter. The next one is the muscular strength. This is the capacity of muscles to exert or resist force. The test used here is push up. Push up. For the performer, lie down on the mat, face down in standard push-up position. Palms on the mat, about shoulder width, fingers pointing forward, and legs straight, parallel, and slightly apart with the toes supporting the feet. For boys, straighten the arms, keeping the back and knees straight. Then lower the arms until there is a 90 degree angle at the elbows. Upper arms are parallel to the floor. For girls, with knees in contact with the floor, straighten the arms, keeping the back straight. Then lower the arms until there is a 90 degree angle at the elbows. Upper arms are parallel to the floor. Perform as many repetitions as possible maintaining a cadence of 20 push-ups per minute, 2 seconds going down and 1 second going up. For the partner, 
As the performer assumes the position of push-up, start counting as the performer lowers his or her body until he or she reaches 90 degree angle at the elbow. Make sure that the performer executes the push-ups in the correct form. The test is terminated when the performer can no longer execute the push-ups in the correct form, is in pain, voluntarily stops, or cadence is broken. Scoring. Record the number of push-ups made. Next one is muscular endurance. This is the capacity of muscles or group of muscles to exert force over an extended period. The test used here is basic plank. Let's watch how to do the basic plank. Basic plank. For the performer, assume a push-up position. Rest body on forearms with palms and fingers flat on the floor. Elbows are aligned with the shoulders. Legs are straight with ankles, knees, and thighs touching together. Support weight on forearms and toes. Make sure that your back is flat. Head, neck, and spine are in a straight line. Keep abdominals engaged or contracted. Do not let stomach drop or allow hips to rise. For the partner, ensure the availability of a mat or smooth flooring or anything that can protect the forearms. Give the signal go and start the timepiece. Make sure that the back of the head, neck, spine, and ankles are in a straight line. Stop the time when the performer can no longer hold the required position or when the performer has held the position for at least 90 seconds. Holding the plank position beyond 90 seconds is considered unnecessary. Scoring. Record the time in the nearest seconds or minute. Next one is cardiovascular strength. This is the capacity of heart, blood vessels, and the respiratory system to supply oxygen efficiently over an extended period. Cardio means heart, and vascular means supply of oxygen. The test used here is the 3 minute step test. Let's watch. 3 minute step test. For the performer, Position at least one foot away from the step or bench. At the signal go, step up and down the step or bench for 3 minutes at a rate of 24 steps per minute. One step consists of 4 beats, that is, up with the left foot, count 1, up with the right foot, count 2, down with the left foot, count 3, down with the right foot, Count 4. Immediately after the exercise, locate your pulse and wait for the signal to start the counting. Don't talk while taking the pulse beat. Count the pulse beat for 10 seconds. Multiply it by 6. For the partner, as the student assumes the position in front of the step, signal ready and go, start the stopwatch for the 3 minute step test. For the partner, as the student assumes the position in front of the steps, signal ready and go. Start the stopwatch for the 3 minute step test. After the test, allow performer to locate his or her pulse in 5 seconds. Give the signal to count the pulse beat. Let the performer count his or her pulse beat for 10 seconds and multiply it by 6. Scoring. Record the 60-second heart rate after the activity. The next one is body composition. It is the percent of fat, bone, and other tissues to lean body mass. The test used here is the body mass index. The body mass index 
or the BMI, is a measurement of body fat based on height and weight. Height is the distance between feet on the floor to the top of the head, while the weight is the heaviness or the lightness of the person. In measuring height, the materials we need to use are the tape measure, tape, and book. The units we're going to use here is in meter. Let us watch. So make sure your diver has taken off his shoes, that he's wearing close-fitting, thin clothing, and have him stand straight right over the masking tape on the wall. Uh, you'll need an object that has two straight edges. You can use a binder or a board. Um, in this case, we're using a set square. With your diver standing straight, place the tool on top of the diver's head and square it to the wall. Once you've got the level, mark your tape. Now, I like to check my measurements two or three times, so please step forward, relax a little bit, and step back, and let's measure again to make sure. If I don't get the same measurements, I will measure two, three, or four times. This is really crucial to get the most accurate measurements possible. And again, square the object to the wall and to your diver's head, and mark. So this top mark equals the diver's total height. Now, in measuring weight, we need weighing scale. And the units we're going to use is kilogram. Let us watch. Hello, my name is Maria and this is Matthew, my mascot. In this lesson, we're going to be measuring in kilograms. We're going to find the weight of certain things using kilograms. And we use kilograms when we have sort of medium heavy things, not real light things. For example, I couldn't weigh this marker pen using kilograms. And I have a scales here that measures in kilograms. And we're going to use it in this lesson and now I'm going to step on it. Okay, can you see how much I weigh? I'm very near 60 kilograms with my shoes and everything on. So maybe 59 or 59 and a half. Yeah. Okay, here's a child, a seven year old girl. And can you see how much she weighs? Okay, it is two little lines past 20, so she weighs 22 kilograms. Okay, and here is an adult man. I need to see what it... Okay, can you see how much he weighs? It is just one line past 90, so it is 91 kilograms. Now, let's weigh this bag. I'll try. As you can see, it covers the scale. We cannot weigh it here on the scale like this. But what I can do is I can weigh myself with and without the bag. So let's do that. I'll weigh myself with the bag. Okay, how much is it? It is just one line before 65, so now I am 64 kilograms. And I'm gonna drop the bag and I go back to about 59. So how much does the bag weigh? Think of the numbers 59 and 64 and the difference. It is five kilograms. Oh, Matthew has something to say. What's that, Matthew? Oh, he wants to step on the scales. But Matthew, I mean, we can't weigh very light things like you are. We can't weigh you in kilograms. Oh, still, he is insisting. Okay, I'll let him go. Okay. Go there. You see, Matthew, you're not tipping the scales any. I told you. Oh, well. But now you are ready to go find the scales that measures in kilograms and weigh yourself and some other things. And we're all done with this lesson.
Now, we are done in measuring our weight and height. So let us compute the BMI or the body mass index. The formula we are going to use is weight over height in squared. Hi, this is Presh Talaker. In this video, I'm going to explain the mathematical formula for the body mass index, also known as the BMI. BMI is a way to estimate body fat from the two variables of weight and height. One way is to divide your weight in kilograms by your height in meters and square it. The equivalent formula in pounds and inches is to take your weight in pounds, multiply by 703, and divide it by your height in inches squared. So while the BMI gets talked about a lot, it's actually a relatively simple formula that's a ratio of your weight and height. So let's do an example of someone who weighs 200 pounds and has a height of 5 feet 10 inches. We convert that to 70 inches and the BMI will be 200 times 703 divided by 70 squared. This is 28.7. To make sense of this number, we look at the different ranges. Below 18 is considered underweight, 18.5 to 24.9 is considered normal weight, 25 to 29.9 is overweight, and above 30 is considered the definition for obesity. So a BMI of 28.7 is in the range of overweight. We can similarly look at BMI by the following table. You can look and locate where your height and weight are, and it'll tell you which range you're in. So a person who is 200 pounds and 5 feet 10 would be about where the black dot is, which is in the range of being overweight. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. You can support me on Patreon for exclusive rewards. Catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, on Twitter at Preshtalwakar, and you can get my books listed on my website. So, what is your BMI? Is it underweight, normal, or obesity? To maintain physically fit or to become, we have to have exercise or exercise program. And exercise has these types and always needs to perform. First is warm up. The second one is the workout. And the third one is the cool down. Warm up. Warm up exercise prepares the heart, muscles, and the circulatory system and stretches the skeletal muscles. The workout are the exercise test or improve one's fitness for athletic competition, ability, or performance. While the cool down helps the body recover from a physical activity. Here are the suggested exercises for warm up and cool down. Number one, calf stretching. This exercise stretches the calf muscle. Two, leg hug. This exercise stretches the hip and the back exterior muscles. Third one, we have seated side stretch. This exercise stretches the muscles of the trunk. Next one, the hamstring stretch. This exercise stretches the muscles of the back of the upper leg, as well as the hip, knee, and ankle. And we have the zipper. This exercise stretches the muscles at the back of the arms and the lower chest muscles. 
for us to become more physically fit and healthy, we have to have an exercise program. Why? Because exercise program is a strategy that details the physical exercises an individual should perform in order to reach goals and the amount of time should spend on each exercise. It is a key promoting and maintaining good health. So if you have an exercise program, it will definitely help you on improving. In the exercise program, we have a smart guide to goal setting. For a short term period, it should be developed with a finite amount of time in mind. For example, 30 minutes, 1 hour or 2 hours of exercise. Another smart guide is the long term. It's something you want to do further in the future. The long term goals require time and planning. Example, week 1 to 2 for one month or for six months. Before starting an exercise program, set short-term and long-term goals. These goals should be SMART. S is for specific. You have to write down what you want to achieve. For example, losing weight. M. It should be measurable. You have to write down the amounts, time, days, and other measuring factors. Example, running 10 minutes morning. A. For achievable. Your goals should be realistic. For example, Losing one kilogram in a week. R. It should be relevant. Your goal should be important to you. For example, to be fit and healthy. And T. It should be trackable. Recording your progress helps you see what you have achieved. Example, use exercise program. You have to keep in mind that sometimes physical activity is different to exercise. Physical activity refers to an activity that involves contraction of muscles, like your day-to-day -day activity. Examples are gardening, walking, climbing stairs. On the other hand, exercise is a specific form of physical activity that is planned and structured involving repetitive bodily movements performed to improve and maintain physical fitness. You have to keep in mind as well that in physical fitness, you can have a set of goals that you can achieve, and that is related to your ability to perform such physical activity. And this physical activity has different levels. You can choose from a light intensity activity, such as walking slowly and gardening, which is perfect for those senior citizens. For moderate intensity activity, such as walking briskly and playing leisure sports, are intended for those middle ages men. And for vigorous activities such as jogging, running, playing competitive sports, and circuit training, are mostly designed for athletes. And now, we are going to discuss about the sports of volleyball. 
Let's continue. So, let's begin with the basics of volleyball. Volleyball is a game in which two teams of players hit a large ball, which is the volleyball, back and forth over a high net. It is composed of six players per team and six players only allowed to play in the court per team. So, inside the court, there are a total of 12 players. It is considered as indoor sports. That is why many tournaments are held inside the court. But for recreational purposes or recreational sports or games, you can play volleyball outside the court. Volley means hitting the ball before it touches the ground. That is the rule of the game. Defend or avoid the ball touching your ground or hit the ball to land or touch it on opponent's ground. So, the ball must always be in the air. Now, let's talk about the history of volleyball. It was in 1895 that William G. Morgan, a physical education teacher at YMCA, invented the volleyball. He invented the volleyball in Holyoke, Massachusetts because some businessmen are having a hard time playing basketball. That is why they invented the volleyball because they find basketball to be vigorous. The first name of the game was actually not volleyball, but it is called Mintonet. And for the continuation, actually it was only in 1896 that from Mintonet, Alfred Halstead changed the name of the game into what we know today, the volleyball. In 1910, the game volleyball was introduced to the Filipinos by the American named Elwood S. Brown, who was then the physical director of the Young Men's Christian Association, YMCA. Let's continue. In 1916, in the Philippines, an offensive style of passing the ball in a high trajectory to be struck by another player were introduced. In 1917, the scoring changed from 21 from 15. When the volleyball was invented back then, you can have as many hits as you want. But it was only in 1920 that they decided to make it only three hits per side. And the back row attack rules were instituted. Well, in 1947, they founded the Federation Internationale de Volleyball, or basically what we know today as the FIVB. So, if basketball has FIBA, remember, 
that FI VB or the Federation Internationale de Volleyball is for the volleyball. After it was known international, in 1964, the sports volleyball was included in the Summer Olympic Games. While, in 1998, the introduction of the 25-point rally system to set 1 to 4 was made. And remember, in the fifth set, it remains raised to 15 points. Now, let's talk about the equipments or the things needed in the volleyball game. Obviously, the first thing you need is the ball itself, which is the volleyball. So from the circumference, from the diameter, the weight, the air pressure, and the materials should be followed, set by the international standard. And there you have it on your screen. After the ball, Let's talk about the net and the poles. The size, the length of the net is just the same for boys and girls. It only differs in the height. The boys' net is higher than the girls' net. Let me also add that antenna is also included as you are not allowed to touch it and the ball to go beyond it. It's like a outside line near at the pole or at the end of the net. There you can see the straight line or the straight antenna near at the end of the net. Of course, let's not forget the court itself. For the court, it should have a length of 18 meters with a width of 9 meters. Now, let's look at the court dimension. A tack line is also important in volleyball as it will separate the frontline players to the backline players. And this line will also play an important role for the libero player and we are going to discuss it further as we dig deeper in volleyball game. Now, aside from the court itself, let's talk about the playing area. So now, or nowadays, okay, aside from the court, as you can see on your screen, or the yellow area that is the court, playing area should also be considered. Okay, the green part on your screen are what we call the playing area and that should be followed as well. I know guys, you are very excited to know more about the history of volleyball in the Philippines. So, let's just watch this video. Isa sa pinakamahalagang kontribusyon ng mga Pilipino sa larong volleyball ang pagkaimbento ng setting at spiking. Paano nga ba ito nangyari? Taong 
1895 nang naimbento ni William Morgan ang larong volleyball. Ito ay makalipas lamang ang apat na taon nang naimbento naman ang matalik na kaibigan nitong si James Naismith ang larong basketball. Mabilis ang pagsikat ng larong basketball noon lalo na sa mga kabataan. Ngunit ang nasabing laro ay masyadong nakakapagod at hindi ang ko para sa mga negosyante at para sa mga lalaking medyo maidad na. Dahil dito, naisip ni William Morgan na gumawa ng isang team sport na hindi na kailangan ng physical contact. At doon na nga nagsimula ang pagkaimbento ni William Morgan ng larong volleyball. Ang konsepto ng larong volleyball ay nagmula sa iba't ibang sports na pinagsama ni William Morgan. Ang konsepto ng paggamit ng bola ay nakuha nito mula sa larong basketball. Ang paggamit naman ng net ay nakuha nito mula sa larong tennis. Ang paggamit ng kamay para maitawid ang bola sa kabilang bahagi ng net ay nakuha nito mula sa larong handball. Ang konsepto naman ng paggamit ng innings ay nakuha nito sa isa sa pinakasikat na laro noon, ang baseball. At dahil nga sa mga larong iyon kung kaya nabuo ang larong volleyball. At dahil nga sa masyadong mabigat ang bola ng basketball para gamitin sa nasabing laro, si William Morgan ay nakipag-ugnayan kay A.G. Spalding at sa mga kapatid nito para gumawa ng espesyal na bola na gagamitin sa larong volleyball. Ang naimbentong laro ni William Morgan ay una nitong tinawag sa pangalan na Mintonet. Taong 1986 nang ipinresenta ni William Morgan ang bagong imbento nitong laro sa YMCA Physical Directors Conference na ginanap noon sa Springfield, Massachusetts. Matapos ang nasabing conference, si Dr. Alfred Halstead ay nagsuggest na palitan ang pangalan nito at gawing volleyball. At yun na nga ang naging pangalan ng nasabing laro hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Malaki ang pagkakaiba ng larong volleyball noon kaysa ngayon. Ilan sa mga kaibahan ng larong volleyball noon ang pagkakaroon ng unlimited players at unlimited touches. Magkaiba din ang scoring system na kung saan gumagamit pa sila noon ng innings. Sa service section, kapag kinapos ang serve, pwede itong patamaan ng kasamahan nila para maitawid sa kabilang bahagi ng net. Mabilis ang pagsikat ng larong volleyball hindi lamang sa Amerika kundi maging sa buong mundo. Nakarating ang larong volleyball sa Pilipinas taong 1910 at ito ay dahil kay Ilwood Brown. Matatandaan sa kasaysayan na minsang naging teritoryo ng Estados Unidos ang Pilipinas mula noong taong 1898 hanggang 1946. Dahil sa ang Pilipinas ay binubuo ng mga isla, ang mga sundalong Amerikano noon na na-assign sa iba't ibang isla sa ating bansa ang tumulong upang palaganapin ang nasabing laro sa buong bansa. Lingid sa kaalaman ng karamihan, ang mga Pilipino ay merong malaking naiambag sa larong volleyball. Isa na dito ang pagkaimbento ng 3-hit limit. Matatandaan na ang volleyball noon ay meron pang unlimited hits o unlimited touches. Ngunit nang naglaro ang mga Amerikanong sandalo kasama ang mga Pinoy, napansin nila ang kakaibang estilo na ginagawa ng mga Pinoy. Ang mga manlalaro kasi natin noon ay masyadong mapagbigay, na kung saan sinusigurado muna nila na lahat ng kasamahan nila ay makakatama sa bola bago nila ito itawid sa kabilang bahagi ng court. Ang nasabing estilo ng paglalaro ng mga Pinoy ay masyadong time-consuming at nakakabawas din sa competitiveness ng nasabing laro. Dahil dito, nagdesisyon ang mga Amerikano na ipatupad ang 3-hit limit sa bawat team. Ang pagkakaroon nga ng 3-hit limit ay isa sa mga standard rules ng larong volleyball na ginagamit hanggang sa kasalukuyan. 
Isa rin sa pinakamahalagang kontribusyon ng mga Pilipino sa larong volleyball ang pagkakadiskubre ng setting at spiking. Matapos ipatupad ang 3-hit rule, ang mga Filipino volleyball players natin noon ay naging mas competitive sa nasabing laro. Sa hangarin nilang makascore, naimbento nila ang setting at spiking. Ang naimbento ng mga manlalaro natin noon na set and spike ay tinawag ng mga Amerikano na Filipino bomb. Taong 1961 naman ang unang naaprobahan na ang kauna-unahang volleyball association dito sa ating bansa. Ito ang Philippine Amateur Volleyball Association o PAVA. Ang PAVA ay pinalitan ng PVF o Philippine Volleyball Federation. Ang PVF naman ay pinalitan ng LBPI noong nakaraang 2015. Sa kasalukuyan, tuloy-tuloy ang paglago ng larong volleyball dito sa ating bansa, hindi lamang sa mga lalaki kundi pati na rin sa mga babae. Sa katunayan, ang volleyball ang pumapangalawa sa pinakasikat na team sport dito sa ating bansa. Sa larangan ng women's volleyball, nangunguna pa din sa ranking ang bansang China. Nasa ikapitong pwesto naman ang Japan at nasa ika number 14 ang bansang Thailand. Ang kasamahan naman natin sa Southeast Asia na bansang Vietnam ay nasa ikatatlong put-anim na pwesto. Bagamat tuloy-tuloy ang programa ng volleyball dito sa ating bansa, tayo ay nananatili pa din sa ika 117th na pwesto sa World Ranking. Thank you for reaching this far. If you find this video helpful, support the channel. Just click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. So, as you can see, we Filipinos made a lot of contribution to the sports of volleyball. From the three hit rules, though, we are not the one who invented it, but we are the reason why it was invented. And the spike and the setting, it was made by the Filipinos for the sports of volleyball. We should be proud. MLQ High School are very supportive in these sports. Even though it's pandemic, our school varsity player are in the shape because they always do training inside their house. So you can do it as well. And we will further discuss that training on our house on our next lesson. So that's all for today. Thank you and God bless.